So now that we've gone over panel design and sample prep, I'm going to move on to talking about how to use the instrument itself. So just a reminder of what the workflow is on the Aurora using the software on the Aurora, which is called SpectroFlow. What you, the method that I would recommend is following this protocol. So you would start with your unstained cells. You can set the forward and side scatter on your unstained cells. Then I would recommend taking one of your fully stained samples and previewing that to make sure that your fully stained sample is entirely on scale. And this will help you figure out if you do need to lower any gains that day. So if everything is within the plot and you have nothing that's too bright, then you can move on to recording your reference controls. Then you can do the spectral on mixing, run your fully stained samples, and then move on to analysis. So the first thing you will notice once you start using the Aurora is the SciTech assay settings. So one thing that's great, one thing that was not present in that protocol was changing the gains. For the most part, you probably won't need, won't need to adjust the gains too much. They're automatically set for you. Gains are essentially equivalent to the voltages. Um, so we will have you run daily QC. At this time, we have every single user run it at the beginning of their session. Hopefully that will be changing soon, but for now, everybody runs it and the daily QC will automatically set the gains. So what are these SciTech assay settings that I'm talking about? At first, I was a little bit confused as to what they are. Uh, so when you log into the system, you'll see this panel for instrument control, you'll see user settings, and there's a drop-down menu you can pick. This is our default one that we recommend everyone start with. Um, so you see SciTech assay settings, and then below that, are all the different gains for the forward and side scatter and all the different detectors down here. But then once you start talking to SciTech more, you learn about these target MFIs. So if you take the QC beads and you run them at these default gains under the SciTech assay settings, then your QC beads would look something like this. And for each of these detectors, you can calculate what the MFI is and then for every detector, you now have a target MFI. So are the SciTech assay settings the MFIs or are there these gains? So I bug SciTech a, a lot, <laughs> or my technical application specialist, and I got an answer of where these SciTech assay settings come from. So back at SciTech headquarters, they stained cells with individual floor fours, ran them on their instrument, and determined what are the best gains for each of the detectors. So they did all of this optimization for us. And they determined, they determined what are the best gains based on what are gains so that every single floor four has its own distinct signature, and they also want to minimize the spreading errors. So once they figured that out, then they have the ideal gains for that specific machine. So once they have those gains set, then they take QB Sure beads, which have a fixed fluorescent intensity. They have six peaks, but they run these QB Sure beads at the optimized gains, and then they calculate the target MFIs for each detector. And now, the SciTech assay settings are those target MFIs that were determined from SciTech's original instrument at headquarters. And when they send out instruments to universities or whoever purchases a new Aurora, every Aurora comes with these target MFIs. And sometimes as they learn more things about their instrument or as they add lasers or new fluorophores, they might adjust the assay settings and then send out a new set of assay settings for everyone. So then for daily QC, when each user shows up to their session on the Aurora, we ask that everyone runs daily QC. There's a few other reasons for that that I won't go into and hopefully that will change with a new software upgrade from SciTech, but at this time, Everyone's going to run the daily QC, and when that runs, the gains are automatically set. So you 
take the QC beads out of the fridge, you put them in a tube, dilute them a little bit, put them on the machine, click run for the QC module, and it just automatically figures out where the positive peak is supposed to be, adjusts the gain so it matches the target MFI. Therefore, every time you run a QC, the gains will change slightly. So if you compare from one day to the next, you might see that the gains are going to change by 10 or by 30 small amounts. If you see the gains changing by 300 or 500, which are much larger amounts, then something has gone wrong. But the reason why this works is because the gains in an MFI are directly proportional. So if the MFI is at 500 when you've set the gain at 1000, and then let's say you want to decrease the MFI to 250, then you would just set the gain at 500. So one little note about running the daily QC that we noticed we were running into issues because we didn't realize this. Um, you want to make sure that you dilute the QC beads with sheath and not with DI water. So we have really nice squeeze bottles of DI water sitting around the lab. We don't have those for sheath, but if you use the water to dilute the beads, then you will get a buffer mismatch and you will fail the forward scatter on the QC. So make sure that you dilute the beads in sheath and not in water. You can reuse beads that have been diluted. So SciTech tested them for five days out and found that the diluted beads are fairly stable. But the caveat for that is that they must be stored properly. So they have to be stored in the fridge and protected from light. So the main thing I want you to understand is that if you see a tube that's been sitting on the bench that's labeled QC, even if it's got today's date on it, make sure that you just make your own fresh set of beads. So don't use any random tubes that have been sitting out for some time that you don't know. So when you start your experiment, we ask you to run the daily QC. Make sure you dilute the beads in the 1x PBS sheath buffer and don't reuse diluted beads that have been sitting out. Go make your own freshly diluted set. Um, when you open your experiment, double check that the user settings are SciTech assay settings new July 2019 and they say parentheses admin. These are the default settings. You should not be able to save over these. That's how we've set them. So make sure that these are set here. If someone before you has their own settings and they've changed the settings, once you log in, they will be on the other user settings, not on the default ones. So I don't know what people change in their own personalized settings make sure that you select the default ones if those are the ones that you are intending to select. Pay attention to this at all times. But once you have that set, definitely change the forward and side scatter. So this side scatter is off the violet laser. They've added an additional one off the blue laser. You can just pick one. You don't have to set the side scatter for both of them, but just pick one and stick with it. I usually just stick with the violet laser one. Um, definitely change those for your specific cells, um, but we don't recommend that you change any of the gains on the lasers unless if you need to change the gains, then talk to me or talk to David. We'll show you the proper way to change those settings. Then at the end of your experiment, we ask that you keep the Aurora clean by running a fluidic shutdown. It's not actually a fluidic shutdown, it's more of a clean um, but you just follow the on-screen instructions, which is 10% contrad followed by water. And I also have a handy little um, measurement tool. So it tells you, this is actually an old one, it tells you to fill it up with three mils. So I have a line for three mils. Um, that will help you estimate where to fill the tube. And then always make sure that there's a tube of water left on the Aurora. It doesn't necessarily need a tube of water on the instrument while it's sitting there unused, but for the next person, once they start up the instrument, it's really best if the tube is on there. 